Oh boy, this one might upset a bunch of people, but uh, just remember that these are my thoughts and that you can like the same games that I think are overrated. But I do have good reasonings for my beliefs, and heck, there are a few games in here that I really like as well. I just don't think they warrant the hype they receive. If you enjoy top 10s and JRPG content, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all. Now let's count down the top 10 most overrated JRPGs of all time. Number 10. I have Jade Cocoon down here in the 10th spot because it's been hyped up by some as being on par with some of the bigger and better monster taming games and franchises. Not only that, but some people consider this to be one of the great PS1 JRPGs and this just ain't it, man. Jade Cocoon's a fine game to play through, I managed to get through the entirety of it, but there really isn't anything special here. The story is about as bland as it gets, the areas you explore are just cookie cutter locations, and the monster taming and combining just felt messy. There was never a point in this game that I thought to myself, wow, I can't believe I missed out on this. But it's not necessarily a bad game either, which is why I have it ranked here lower on the list. Number 9 Now I love the Xenoblade Chronicles series. Xenoblade Chronicles 1 was a masterpiece in storytelling and world design, Xenoblade 2 expanded and improved the combat system, and Xenoblade 3 and its post-game DLC might be my favorite of the bunch. So you can imagine that after playing and thoroughly enjoying Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and its incredible ending, I'd want to sink my teeth into its critically acclaimed DLC and even standalone expansion, Torna the Golden Country. Torna was built as this incredible standalone prequel to the game. It follows the story of one of the Xenoblade 2 villains, Jin, and his old crew, so in concept, this should have been fantastic. Unfortunately, the combat somehow felt worse than the original game, and they forced you to do a crap load of boring and menial side quests in order to be able to continue the main story. This was so game-breaking for me, and completely ruined my experience. In order to push forward and learn the mysterious past of these notorious characters, I had to do things like collect items to help some random nopon make hats, and kill a random mob three times. All this, plus being forced to improve your stupid community level in order to unlock more shitty half-baked side quests, is why Torn of the Golden Country made it here at number 9 on the list. Number 8 Man, this was a game I went into fully riding the hype. An action platformer that doubles as a JRPG sounds like the perfect game for me. Unfortunately, Valkyrie Profile's platforming controls were abysmal, making this game an absolute chore to play through. There were so many times where the most basic of jumps were failed due to wonky-ass stiff controls. As someone who's beaten every Mega Man and Castlevania game, this on top of the lack of explanation for its combat system nearly drove me to quit the damn game. Thankfully I was streaming the game because people in the chat managed to explain the combat system better which eventually made even the toughest of battles into a cakewalk later on in the game. I feel like if they cleaned up the platforming controls and better explained the combat system, this truly would live up to its hype, but due to these glaring issues I had to stick it back here at the number 8 spot on the list. Number 7 I know a lot of people consider Final Fantasy VI to be their favorite game of all time, and that's okay. But to me, this game completely falls off once you get to the world of Rune. For starters, I absolutely hated Sellys. So starting off the second half of the game with her as my only party member already got things off on the wrong foot. People always try telling me, yeah, but she absorbs magic. Who cares? If a monster doesn't even use a spell that turn, she's a waste of a party slot. If they do cast a spell, I'd rather be dealing damage to end the battle than just negating their attack. Sally sucks. Anyway, the other issue with World of Ruin is that you're kind of just tossed out there with no real direction on where to go. This could be a game-ending nightmare and definitely has been for me several times in the past. Another thing that really sucks about this game are, well, most of its characters. Now don't get me wrong, I love Locke, Terra, Sabin, Setzer, and even Mog, but pretty much everyone else feels like they're just randomly chucked in there so they could say they have a massive cast of characters, or they're just unlikable as a character in general. Shadow was cool too, but he's never around. Before you go off on me in the comments, I strongly believe that the first half of Final Fantasy VI is an absolute masterpiece. But the world of Runage is so awful that everything the game has built up to this point just kind of falls apart to me. Number 6 
this was an easy one to put on the list. The Kingdom Hearts series flourished on the PS2 when they first came out, and if you're like me, you bought them back then because Final Fantasy was still all the craze, and Kingdom Hearts was the next best way to experience its characters, spells, and a bit of lore. Fast forward around 20 years later, and the series has tried to build its own overly convoluted, nonsensical storyline that never really seems to be going anywhere other than everyone's fucking Xehanort. Even the original games were super cringy, but now the series is so far off its rocker that even some of its biggest fans look back at it in disappointment. From the combat system to the story and its world, Kingdom Hearts was one of the most overhyped franchises of all time. But since its third main release, the hype has died down quite a bit, which is why it's back here in the number 6 position. Number 5 Here's another one I'm likely to get flack for, but other than Breath of Fire 2, I did not really get the hype for the Breath of Fire series. Breath of Fire 1 was jankier and less well designed than some NES JRPGs, Breath of Fire 3 had some awful camera angles in minigames, and its story was pretty dull right before the end. Breath of Fire 4, despite looking gorgeous, just wasn't what I was expecting. I have it back here at number 5 because none of these games were necessarily bad or anything, but people have straight up told me these were some of the greatest JRPGs ever made, when in reality, at best, they're like 7 out of 10 games. Number 4 The Pokemon series was a ton of people's introduction to the JRPG genre, so we have to give it credit for that. And earlier on, the Pokemon franchise had some absolute bangers, but as the series went on, it just got so stale and samey, and then when the Switch era happened, there was a distinct lack of quality. It really feels like Game Freak or the Pokemon Company aren't even trying anymore because they just know their fans will run out and buy any old Pokemon slop they crap out. It's sad to see a series that was once well respected in the genre fall so far from grace, but because of this, Pokemon sits comfortably as the fourth most overrated JRPGs. Number 3 <laughs> Man, this one actually hurt. I heard for years how incredible Live Alive was, and how it was one of those incredible Super Famicom games that just never made its way west. So when they announced and released the Live Alive HD 2D remake, I was so pumped to finally play it. Unfortunately, this game was hyped to the moon and did not live up to expectations. Sure, there was the odd really good story in here, like the Sundown Kid, and I like the MMA fighter who also faces off against some pro wrestlers, but overall, this game dragged hard. The pacing was awful, the combat system was nothing to write home about, and also artificially lengthened the game, and I just couldn't wait for this damn game to end when I was playing it. After beating everyone's stories, it just kept adding more boring ass story. For absolutely not living up to the decades of hype in the least bit, Live Alive landed here at the number 3 spot on the list. Number 2 You knew it was going to be in here, but you didn't know where. Final Fantasy VII, like Pokemon before it, was a lot of people's first foray into the JRPG genre. For that, I'm thankful. But with all of its fanfare, it truly is just an above average PS1 era JRPG. About a year or two ago, I started my journey to play through all the great PS1 JRPGs that I had missed out on. And I understand now more than ever why Final Fantasy VII was so highly regarded at the time. Let me tell you, there were a lot of subpar JRPGs in the early PS1 era. Don't get me wrong, some absolute legends were released on the PS1, but I honestly feel like compared to games like Breath of Fire 3 and 4, Guardians Crusade, and Beyond the Beyond, Final Fantasy VII's gameplay and presentation truly stands tall. But when you look at it outside of those early PS1 days, the game isn't necessarily anything special. The story has never really interested me, I hate the tedious materia system, and the only characters I liked were Sid and Tifa. Is Final Fantasy VII a bad game? Heck no. And it's strange that I'm here finally giving it its flowers in a top 10 overrated JRPGs video. But the game just doesn't deserve all the hype and fanfare it's received over the years, and that's why it's here in the number 2 spot. Number 1 I mean, come on. Talk about a game that's still somehow hyped to the moon by its fans, despite never even really getting finished. Zeno Gears is pretty much a mess from start to finish, and definitely gets worse as it goes on. The game has awful platforming where you can't quite gauge the distance because the camera is constantly zoomed in too close to the floor, and if you touch anything while jumping, 
you will lose all momentum and drop like a sack of bricks. The story is decent, but is told in the lamest way possible, with half the game just having characters sitting in a goddamn rocking chair while walls of text scroll across the screen. The only real redeeming quality this game had was its combat system being fun and innovative as heck. Xenogears definitely had potential, but there's nothing here worth playing in my opinion. Maybe with a complete remake fixing all of its issues and finishing the story properly, this game could finally earn its fanfare, but until then, it deserves its place at the top of the heap as the number one most overrated JRPG of all time. Thanks so much for watching guys, if you enjoyed it, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn notifications to all. Tell me some games that you feel don't deserve their hype in the comments, as well as some JRPGs that are criminally underrated, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.